In the last video, we carried out Nearest Neighbor, which is an algorithm that belongs to the greedy class. It's called greedy because we started at point A and always went to the closest possible point, even when that wasn't the best long-term strategy. We have another algorithm in that class, and unfortunately, the name's a bit confusing. It's greedy with a capital G. In this case, we're going to join these segments together so that we're always joining the shortest segment. The rule is that we can only join a point to another point if that point has a free space. So joining points K and D would be fine, but joining points I and J would not because point I is already joined to two other points. In your spreadsheet, you've got a second tab which is designed to help you do greedy. We've removed some of the points and we've set it up so that the shortest possible segments are highlighted in green. A reminder that you'll want to go to your points, open them in the app, and this time around you'll want to use the segment tool to join your shorter segments together. In this case I've got a tie between IJ and IK, so I have flipped a coin and it told me to go with IJ. And that shows all of my one unit points joined together, so I can go back to my spreadsheet. And when I delete them, the next shorter segments are displayed. At this point, my spreadsheet's telling me to join JF and JH, but of course I can't join JH because that's an illegal move. And in that case, it's okay to just delete those points from the spreadsheet. One useful strategy to eliminate points from your spreadsheet is once a point has got two lines going from it, you should delete all the points associated with that point. And here's what my diagram currently looks like. So the next thing that I'm going to do is see which is the shorter segment that joins to point P. And my spreadsheet conveniently tells me that's point O. And once I've systematically worked through the points, that's what my toy looks like. The next step is to use our polygon tool and carefully trace over the shape. Once you've done that, you want to go back into the measuring area. Make sure that you choose distance or length. Click on the shape and it will give you the perimeter. And I've inserted an additional slide because I've got a slide for my notes and then a slide with the outcome. In this case, Greedy gave a longer tour compared with nearest neighbor, but a shorter tour than my initial eyeball tour.